Yo, what's up guys? Joker here bringing you another video for the 3.22 Trial of the Ancestors League. This is going to be my usual high-level TLDR of everything we got in the announcement. And then leading up to the league start, that's when I'm actually going to be going ahead and giving more detailed breakdowns of everything that we got. Just because it is a lot and I don't want this to be a 30-minute video. So let's get right into it. Uh, first, we got the trailer itself. I already have a video of my um, impressions of it. Essentially, it looks like uh, Hall of the Grand Masters mixed with auto chess. Um, if you've never played auto chess, like I previously mentioned, you do want to go ahead and go check that out because I feel like you're going to want to have like a rough concept of auto chess just because of the fact of that's what it looks like it's going to be. I mean, obviously people are going to have videos kind of min maxing it, but if you want to go in blind or do it on your own, you're really going to want to know how auto chess works apart from that. We have 16 new Atlas Keystones and two new Ascendancy Reworks and 14 Support Gems. So the 14 Support Gems is good. That's one of the things that I wanted in my previous video that I mentioned. I said overall 10 Skill Gems, 5 Active, and 5 Support, but I'll take 14 Skill Gems. Uh, I'm sorry, 14 Support Gems. Hopefully some of them are good. Uh, and dropping down... For the currency, we have silver coins. Hmm, I, I feel like that was repurposed. Uh, but this is going to work exactly the same way as uh, the rogue coins. Uh, I, I don't remember what they're called, but like the things that take you to the rogue harbor, those. Um, because you use it as currency to get there as well as you use it as currency while you're there. Rogue markers, that's what they're called. I don't know why I couldn't remember. It's been a long day. I've tried to record this four times already. Um, the rewards that you get from the Challenge League all seem, well, not all, but a lot of them seem pretty cool. You have things like this, the tattoo of the Nagahuma Flamewalker, which essentially swaps a strength passive for fire res, which is going to be really good if you're on like a deck space or an in base class. You just get free res and you don't have to worry about as much res on your gear, which allows you to get damage on your gear because you're getting res from your passive tree. Uh, this summon spirit of Atula on taking a savage hit. No idea what the spirit of Atula is, so I can't really comment. I have a feeling it's going to be decently strong since it limits you to one. So it's probably damage reduction. Maybe it works like the Harvey that you get from that one belt that gives you like CDR. Maybe it's like a familiar like that. But since it says trigger level 20 summon spirit of Atula, I think it is going to be a support minion because you have to take a savage hit to trigger it this is going to be the same thing as like the fire res if you're on an enter strength based class where you don't really need decks and you're just passing through a couple of decks it gives you kind of an incentive to pass through decks for the move speed so it gives you a slight incentive to have your uh passive tree look a little bit stupider so that's interesting this i don't really understand it's not limited but it's also not as strong as just naturally stat stacking would be um it's one to seven lightning damage which would be good for the early game but i mean that that falls off pretty hard uh, then we got something, in my opinion, that's pretty cracked. Replaces a small attribute passive, so any of them, with 1% reservation efficiency. And it's not capped, so can I just get like a hundred of these bitches <laughs> and just have a 100% reservation efficiency? I, I, I have a feeling like there's going to be really cheese methods with this that's going to be patched really quickly otherwise it's going to be like another or stacker situation unless i'm misreading this it's been a while since i played path of exile and i know wording is really important but the way this reads it does read like all the other reservation efficiency so 
it should work in tangent with them. Um, so I, I feel like that could be pretty nutty. As well as this, Honor Tattoo of the Wise Man. This makes me feel like there's obviously going to be one for like the strong man and then like the dexterous man. I, I, I don't know what they would do for the range, but it would be plus one to level of all skill gems, right? So all int, all, well, not all, but in this case, all int gems. And then obviously they're going to have a strength one and a dex one. And they might even have a uh, plus one to all skill gems, which would be insanely cracked. But that's really cool there. They have examples of these totems, but in my opinion, most of these totems suck. Like the only good totem is this one, right? Which is essentially the old rags to riches fortune where I believe that was what it was called, where when you chant it, it becomes a unique. This is going to make certain uniques really, really, really cheap, honestly. Or this is going to be really expensive because a lot of bases, there's only one alternative that you can actually chance it into. So this I feel like is either going to be really rare and expensive or a lot of um, generic um, uniques are going to be more prevalent and obviously cheaper just because there's going to be a lot more of them floating around. I give an example, but I can't give any, uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head right now. And like I said, I don't want this to be like a 50 minute video. So then we got... Uh, uh, what Hinakor is lock, right? This is something that I found interesting just because of the fact that I'm not really sure why this would be good. I'm going to wait for like sushi or a crafter to make a video about this. Um, just because of the fact that my knowledge of crafting isn't the best, but let's say you're crafting an item, right? And you get to more of the end game stages when you would exalt slam it. Let's say you have all your prefixes or your suffixes already perfect. You do prefixes or suffixes can't be changed. And then normally the next step would be slam slam, right? Right. Um, you would use this on it and it would tell you if you would slam or not. But what would you do if it's a bad outcome? Would you just scour it and then do suffixes can't be changed again? I'm I'm not really sure how this would really be useful. So I'm going to have to wait to see how it works in game. And once again, have like one of the better crafters tell me what to do with it, because for me, I don't. I don't see how it's that good because, yeah, it tells you, but what, what, how do you re-roll after that? Because it changes when you re-roll it, but I don't see the point. You'd have to burn through an absolutely stupid amount of these. It would be what? Suffixes can't be changed, and then you use this, and then if it's shitty, remove crafted modifiers suffixes can't be changed do it again that just sounds so expensive so there there has to be another way apart from that they showed us an example of a couple of 2c uniques which i mean okay all of these in my opinion are dead on entry um this ring that is huge that they didn't give us yet i i have a feeling that this is going to be pretty cracked but Speaking about cracked rings, Forbidden Sanctum's back. And that means we get the original sin back. If you've never seen how stupidly overpowered that makes any elemental build, go look um, at Subtractum's original sin videos where he, he was very budget builds and it was just insanely cracked damage. The thing I'm probably most excited for is the new 16 keystones that we get, right? Because right now we only have three, and I'm already a big fan of the three that we have. Extreme Archaeology, this is going to stack with the Atlas Passive and Scarabs anyways. So this one explosive you get is going to essentially clean your entire expedition for you right so if you're like a chaos build and you don't have to worry about like they can't be impacted by the main three elements this is going to be really good for you to just run drop the one explosive have it pop and clear expeditions insanely fast this is probably going to be a really good currency maker especially early on 
This, on the other hand, seems like it's going to be really, really interesting, right? This turns the ball side areas essentially almost into strong boxes where you're able to roll them and then obviously you're going to be able to corrupt them. So with the balances that they've done to the side areas, this may be viable. I haven't seen anyone really do like a hundred or a thousand ball side areas that uh, after the rework and seeing if the loot's actually worth it. But this has some potential, right? Let's say you're running past and you have a vol side area or even an alluring vol side area, right? Stacked with this, that might be the play. The alluring vol side areas plus lucid dreams because that's going to be a lot of loot. Uh, and then we have something that, in my opinion, is going to be insanely cracked because of this right here. Modifiers to final bo uh, map bosses in each map also apply to these summon bosses. So if you know, you know. But this is going to be a great currency maker, in my opinion. I'm going to obviously test it first before I really say anything indefinitely. But like I said, if you know, you know that this has potential just because of this line with sextants and everything to be insanely cracked. So that's pretty dope there. Uh, it showed us an example of two skill gems. And then uh, two, we have 12 more to come. I mean, honestly, returning projectiles, the only thing that I can think of with this is like poison spark, right? Because you won't, wouldn't really care about the less da damage. You would just care about the fact that you're giving the spark the extended durability. And then I guess ball lightning too maybe I, I just don't know any range skills where you're going to be swapping this out especially since you know what they probably nerfed vengeance cascade they probably that that's it they killed vengeance cascade that has to be it that's why they're making it a skill gem that answers that question uh, frigid bond support. I didn't actually see this one. Supported skill chills between you. Oh, yes, I did. That's stupid. It's a link skill. No one cares. Um, and then we got the guardian rework. Once again, link skills. No one cares. Honestly, the only thing that really seems interesting in this is the unwavering faith and the radiant faith being like a new type of aura stacker, right? Because we're going to be able to have max block and then we're going to be able to be curse and element immune on top of the fact we're going to have a shit ton of recovery and we're going to have a lot of armor and ES. So I, I feel like this might be a new type of aura stacker, especially with the new tattoos. Apart from that, there's a couple of minions, but... I mean, you're not really going to be triggering this minion at all uh, unless you're using, like, I guess, writhing jars, maybe. I don't know. And even then, it's only a 25% chance. So I, someone a lot smarter than me is going to have to figure that one out. Then we got Summon Sentinel of Radiant Skill. And this just seems like a 10% damage reduction, right? Because 10% of the damage you take is taken from the Sentinel before you. So this is essentially just a meat shield where you're now taking 90% damage as long as this thing stays alive. And with the auras you're going to be able to have on to make sure that this thing stays alive, it's pretty much just a free 90% damage. So chieftain is the one that looks really insane this this has me feeling like captain lance and pox are gonna have a, a field day like i may be misunderstanding and this may not be as good as i'm thinking it is but they seem to make righteous fire a character right with things like nearby enemies have no fire res to damage over time while stationary the only thing that comes to mind with this line is righteous fire and i know in higher end righteous fire builds you can get them to go negative but i mean honestly if you grab this on early righteous fire character i'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty cracked on top of the fact that you're going to have 
free maximum fire res that applies to cold and lightning. Like what? You throw on purity of fire and you're like 83 max res from the start just with like an Aegis or something. So th this is this is going to be insanely cracked. Chieftain is going to be insanely OP, right? You put on purity of fire and then uh, you're going to be able to easily get 83 all res. On top of that, like I said, if you put on like an Aegis and then the gem that it has like max cold convert to the others as well then you're going to be able to easily get max res especially with modifiers like this where fire res applies to cold and lightning at 50 percent of the value and you're unimpacted by ignite so this pathing node on its own is like 30 res right because it's a 15 and then it's seven and a half and seven and a half so pretty cracked right there uh totems dead on entry uh this was interesting um and then so was the skills in your chest are supported by level 30 ancestral call and level 20 fist of war but once again it's like a slam skill thing i don't I, I don't know, but I think it also supports strike skills now, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. Wait, trigger a level. Wait, is the, did they take away? I could have swore this had a long gas cooldown. Is it just off every? This might actually be worth looking into now, actually, because I could have swore previously it was shit because of the fact that, um, because of the fact that there was like a long ass cooldown but if there's not a long ass cooldown on this or it may have just been shit because it was only slam skills and fuck slam skills so this may have potential because in my one of my last videos i was saying that frost blades was one of my first characters i well no fist of war wouldn't support frost blades so I maybe once again, someone smarter than me is going to have to figure that out. And then the last thing, um, they have another event for Ben. Um, apart from that, your supporter packs, honestly, a lot of the stuff does look really cool. And I'm at 17 minutes. So I hope that you got enough out of this video. I don't want it to be any longer. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this in future videos. Like I previously mentioned, this is my high level TLDR. So it's going to go ahead and I'm going to have more in-depth videos on everything, especially when we get more items, more reveals, more patch notes, stuff like that. In before Vengeant Cascade is completely destroyed, I'm calling it right now. But that's pretty much it. Like I said, like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date with this in future videos. And until next time, take care.